Well, we all count on Russ Lacate's forecast for the lower mainland on the island. Do I need my umbrella? What is the road conditions or what are the road conditions going to be? But let's just say that the afternoon, like right now, helps you plan for tomorrow's forecast here at Whistler Mountain, right, Anton? Yes, exactly. It all begins right here every afternoon at Pig Alley where we collect our weather observations and then we get a forecast for the, the overnight period. And that the pre-plan starts by meeting with all the department heads to give them an idea on what we're anticipating uh, to expect operationally the following day. And then you get the following day that comes around. Yes, uh, then in the morning we come up here, we collect more observations, we see what actually did happen overnight get an updated weather forecast and then we update our operational plan for the day. And what kind of tools are you using? We, you know, we've obviously seen that you have sensors and everything, but what other kinds of things are you uh, utilizing for things like, I guess, concerns over avalanche or stability of the mountain? Well, we, we're we continually digging snow profiles and analyzing any weaknesses within the snowpack, so we have a pretty good idea on what we can expect uh, given uh, the weather forecast and how much snow we're going to get on top of the existing snowpack. Okay, so then you, you know, you've got the storm that, of course, Anton and his team were able to forecast. Great. Then the real work starts for you guys. Well, it's in partnership with the ski patrol team, right? And operationally, we're working together with them. So there's a lot of avalanche control required in the morning. So their teams are focused on getting the avalanche control work prior to opening. So everything we do for the general power for our guests here is all around safety. So it's all about planning to make the most efficient use of our time. So sometimes it's grooming. So the night before, so whatever the forecast going on tonight and how much snow, we may actually have to do some avalanche control on a big storm day, maybe even in the afternoon the night before so that the groomers can work overnight so we don't stop our operations it runs 24 7. so they need to have a surf wake uh, safe work, uh, work environment so we're going to have them out there working overnight preparing the slopes so when anton's teams get in the morning they check the observations they're going to focus on avalanche control. We're going to focus on getting the lifts prepared, the grooming ready, and everything else going behind them. And then people can make their way up to Whistler Mountain, Whistler Blackcomb, on the gondola, and enjoy the beautiful mountain that we have here in BC, all because we have the great conditions. Thanks very much. More details, whistlerblackcomb.com. We're here on beautiful Whistler Mountain, Pig Alley. Where exactly is Pig Alley, Anton? Well, we're at the 1,650 meter elevation in, on Whistler Mountain. And how did you guys come up with the name? Well, many years ago, we were the first ski area in Western Canada to uh, utilize skidoos operationally. And back in those days, they were really heavy. Like they were about a thousand pounds, double tracks, one ski. They didn't like deep powder. So the only way we could get back up the mountain after a snowfall, they cut this road through the tree so we had an easy way of getting it up. Hence, we nicknamed it the pig. And you know, we actually made our way up here on a skidoo. Uh, we have footage of that right now. This is how you get to work every single day? Yep, I, my day starts off in the morning at home. I, I can look at this, uh, our electronic instrumentation. It tells me how much snow fell overnight. I hop in a skidoo with my dog. I have an avalanche rescue dog, Zeus. We come up here and then we physically measure. We see with our own eyes how much snow has fallen overnight. Then we'll scrape this off so there's nothing on the board and it continues to collect for the duration of the day. Okay, and obviously we're just giving people a little snapshot of some of the tools that you use for the forecasting. Uh, what exactly do you have here? Well, this is a manual snow stake. We, we also have electronic telemetry to tell us how much, uh, what our base is, but we verify that and measure it with our own eyes. And then we call in, the, we call in that information to our guest relations office. And so when you're calling the snow phone, they're telling you how much snow I've seen with my own eyes. And it's important to note that not only are, are people gathering this information, obviously, so that they can figure out how their ski day is going to be or whether they should make their way up here to Whistler to do skiing, you actually provide the information as well to Envi Environment Canada. Yes, we're an official reporting station for Environment Canada, and this, this uh, station was selected because it's a sheltered area. It's an accurate reflection on how much snow has actually fallen. There's no wind effect here. And uh, at, because we're an official weather reporting station for Environment Canada, our data uh, is used by them to, uh, in their forecast that they issue for the people of British Columbia. So much great information. By the way, you can check out the snow report, whistlerblackcomb.com. Well, most of us work in an office might have a bit of a view. I'd have to say, Anton, you guys have the best view here at the snow safety office. And your avalanche technicians, uh, I'm going to give you guys a pat on the back. You guys are kind of a big deal. 
Well, here at Whistler Blackcomb, we have the largest avalanche control program in North America. So let's talk about after a big dump. A big dump of snow, everyone wants to get out onto the mountain, into the Alpine. Um, but if they make their way to the peak chair and it's not open, there's a delay. It's actually a, for a very important reason. Yes, well, actually we have a big dump of snow coming and once the dust settles, uh, it takes time to conduct our avalanche control work and to mitigate any avalanche uh, hazard within our high alpine areas. So if there's a delay, it's because you're trying to keep everybody safe. Let's talk about some of the tools that you use for avalanche control. Well, safety is number one, uh, not, only for our, our, not only for our skiing guests, but also worker safety. And we have a number of tools at our disposal to mitigate the avalanche hazard. Uh, the tool of choice is explosives in order to reduce the, the avalanche or to mitigate any avalanche hazard within our ski area. Uh, we can deploy the explosives uh, by several means, hand charges, uh, we have avalanche guns, we have bomb trams that detonate the explosives above the snow, and we also utilize helicopter when weather permits. Let's talk about the team themselves. How many people are involved? Well, um, we use up to 28 avalanche technicians on Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains, and they can deploy anywhere from two to 300 kilograms of explosives after a large storm cycle. Let's talk about, I mean, I'm still impressed that you guys are handwriting things with what we're seeing well, right Well, yes, now. Uh, we collect the data manually and write it down on a sheet, and then uh, later on it's inputted uh, electronically into the computer, but this is all of our weather observations from four different weather stations at different elevations on the mountain. So much great information. Obviously, we've just, <laughs> literally touched the surface on the very important job they do here. Again, whistlerblackhome.com is the website for all the details on the snow report. Uh, again, just a small portion of the information that you guys gather from a bigger scale to keep all of those skiers and, of course, all of the workers here very safe out on the mountain. Don't you just love it when it snows on the mountain? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Chelsea, exactly where are we right now? We are at the top of Whistler Mountain. We've got the patrol hut uh, in front of us here, and we're peak chairs in behind us. And you can see some of our snow cats here that our groomers will be using tonight to get the mountain ready for tomorrow. So we had a chance to sort of see a, a few of the measurements, just a small fraction of maybe what Anton and his team might do as far as gathering information. Yeah. Where does that information actually go so that it matters to people like me or our viewers out there that are heading to Whistler? Yeah. So so that information that Anton's gathering and our avalanche forecasters are gathering for us go directly into our what we call the Today on the Mountain report. And that goes out to media, it gets updated on our website, um, and we send it out to people around town as well. And it's updated twice a day. So we have snowfall recording, uh, what our base was, um, all of that information that Anton's collecting for us. Okay, so then we look at a forecast and you know, people get really excited when they know that, oh great, tomorrow or in two days, we're expecting so much snow, you better go to Whistler. That's on your website. How do we know that you're not just trying to, you know, go, hey, yeah, we're going to just tell them how much is coming so they come to Whistler? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. We actually purposely use a third party forecast on our website. Um, it comes from a company named RWDI, and a gentleman by the name of Uwe Gramman is producing those forecasts for us. So his, uh, his models and data populates directly onto our website, and we purposely keep that at an arm's length so that there's no way that we can manipulate that forecast for, you know, oh, it's uh, the weekend, we're going to bump that up a little bit. It's a complete third-party forecast. It says so right on the website. Um, right underneath it says RWDI, so it's, it's very clearly indicated. And we, ultimately, we just want people to know that we're not fudging those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Well, hey, beautiful day here in Whistler. For more details on the snow report and, of course, the forecast, uh, you can check out whistlerblackcomb.com.